Okay, in the other video I sort of introduced the uh, concept of graphing quadratic functions in intercept form. And I'm just going to do another uh, sort of longer example of this because I think this is a, uh, a topic that's easy to get a little lost on. So let's, um, let's review it real quick. We have the standard intercept form right here. y equals a times x minus m times x minus n. And what that means is just that we're taking y and we're going to set it equal to two binomials multiplied together, perhaps with a coefficient before them, and perhaps not. Sometimes there's one there, and sometimes there isn't. Um, and I want to take, I'm using example B from the text, and then part B of that example as well, if you want to take a look at uh, where this might match along with the text there. This uh, function here needs to be uh, factored on the right-hand side in order to match our intercept form. So the first thing we need to do is factor this trinomial. Now you don't have to pull out the negative. Usually our first term here is positive. You don't have to pull that out right away, but it does tend to make things easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to just pull that out of all three of these terms, which would give us negative 1 times x squared minus 14x plus 48. And you can see that if I just multiply all those back out, we'd end up back where we started. But now this trinomial inside the brackets, inside the uh, uh, parentheses, has a positive first term, so it's easier to keep track of where we are. So we know we have x times x, that equals x squared, and we need two numbers that multiply to be 48, and then are going to add to be negative 14. So 48 is 6 and 8. Now if they're going to add up to be negative 14, though, we need a negative and a negative, because the only way to get to a negative number by addition is to have negative numbers. But negative 8 times negative 6 is still going to be positive 48, so that still works. And then we'll check our multiplication diagonally. 8 times, or negative 8 times x is negative 8x. And x times negative 6 is negative 6x. Negative 6 and negative 8 is negative 14, so our third check works also. So we have x minus 6 times x minus 8, which means our function now looks like y equals negative 1 times x minus 6 times x minus 8. So now we know our two x-intercepts. They're the two values that make these individual factors equal to 0. x minus 6 has got to be 0, so that would happen when x is positive 6. And x minus 8 would be 0 when x is positive 8. So we have a point at x equals 6 over here and another point where x equals 8, which tells us that our vertex must be at 7, because it's always right in the middle between those two x-intercepts. And then to find, now we know the x-coordinate of our vertex, but we still need to find the y-coordinate. So to do that, we're going to put the x-coordinate we know in. So we're going to substitute 7 into our original function up here, and we'll get negative 7 squared plus 14 times 7 minus 48. 7 squared is 49, so we have negative 49. And I'm going to go ahead and group these. Negative 49 minus 48 plus 7 times 10 is 70. 7 times 4 is 28, so plus 98. Negative 49 and negative 48, well, two 48s are 96, so that would be negative 97. Negative 97 plus 98 would be 1. So y equals 1 when x equals 7. So we're looking at right here. So this is actually not an up parabola. It's a down parabola because that vertex was above the other two points. Now we can verify that by looking at the original function. The original function had this negative initial term, which is what caused that extra step we had to take pulling out that 1. Anytime you have a negative initial x squared term, your parabola is going to be a down parabola. And you can see that that's exactly what turned out here.